Hello, my little budding mathematicians. Um, today, we're going to be talking about special segments in a circle. It's kind of like a mixed bag of all the things that we haven't really talked about um, quite yet in this uh, chapter that we're just going to do them kind of all at one time. You know, it's going to be amazing. Uh, so let's get started. When two chords intersect inside a circle, each chord is divided into two segments called chord segments. So if you look at theorem 10, 15 here, A, B times BC, two chord segments, are going to equal EB times BD, also two chord segments. It says if two chords intersect in a circle like AC and ED do, then the products of the lengths of the chord segments are equal. So let's look at an example for exactly that. Here we've got two chords, AC and DE, that intersect. So we want to find the lengths of the chords. We want to find X. We know that AB times BC is going to equal E, excuse me, B times BD. So let's fill in those letters with some numbers. AB is 5 and BC is 12. And that is going to equal EB is X. DB or BD is 10. 5 times 12 is 60, and 60 is going to equal 10x. We can divide both sides by 10 and get x equals 6. Pretty straightforward. I like it. Look at the next one. We've got JL and PM, two chords that intersect inside the circle, making them chord segments. So we can say that PK times KM is going to equal JK times KL. Let's fill in some numbers. PK is X plus 1. KM is X plus 8. And that equals JK, which is X plus 10, times KL which is just x. We're going to multiply a whole lot the FOIL method. We're going to do it. x times x is x squared. That's f. O is for outside. x times 8 is plus 8x. Inside, 1 times x is plus x. Last, 1 times 8 plus 8. On the right, x times x is x squared x times 10 is plus 10 x gotta combine like terms on the left x squared plus 9 x plus 8 equals x squared plus 10 x let's combine like terms some more subtract x squared from each side that gets rid of all the x squareds now i'm going to subtract 9 x from each side I get 8 equals x. A lot of math, but a really nice, neat solution. Uh, look at part C. Try it on your own. Pause and take it from here. Ready, set, go. All right, we've got two chords intersecting in the center. So that means that QP times PS will equal PR times TP. Let's fill in some numbers to go with these terms, these segments. QP is 6, PS is X, and that equals 15 times 4. Yes, it's a 4. Shut it. Uh, we've got 6X on the left. 15 times 4 is 60. Divide everything by 6, and we get X is 10. Next one. All yours. Ready, set, go. All right, here we've got WS times SY is going to equal ZS times SX. Numbers that go with that. X times X plus 12 is going to equal X plus 6 times X plus 2. 
x times x is x squared, plus 12 times x is 12x. And that's also going to equal FOIL method now, x squared, plus 2x, plus 6x, plus 12. Combining like terms. On the right, I've got x squared plus 8x plus 12. The left stays the same. Let's subtract x squared from everywhere. And those cancel. I'm going to subtract 8x. And I get 4x equals 12. We divide by 4, and x equals 3. Hooray! We did it! <sighs> Onward and upward. On we go. Now we're going to look at a secant segment. It's a segment of a secant line that has exactly one end point on the circle. Uh, in this figure, AC, AC, AB, one end point on the circle, AE, one end point, and AD, those are all secant segments. A secant segment that lies in the exterior of the circle is called an external secant, like AB and AD. One end point on the circle. Just a spline segment, not a complete line. If we look at theorem 1016, if two secants intersect in the exterior of a circle, like an angle A here, then the product of the measures of one secant segment and its external secant segment is equal to the product of the measures of the other secant and its external secant segment. So in other words, it's going to look a lot like our last equations did. AC times AB is going to equal AE times AD, just multiplying the segments together, and they should be equivalent. Let's try it out. Um, so here we've got two secant segments. Let's see, we'll have JH times JG. And that's going to equal JL times JK. Let's fill in these values. JH is 8. JG is X plus 8. JL is 16. JK is 6. Uh, I know that because I have to add JK and JL together to get this whole length. So let's do some multiplication here. 8X plus 64 is going to equal 96. I think so. We can subtract 64 from each side. And we get 8X equals 32. Divide by 8 and we get X is 4. Whew. Try the next one on your own. Do it. Ready, set, go. I think our next problems look this different. Um, so we're going to skip my B and head on to yours, which should be this next one that you should have done. Um, so we'll have TW is 7 times TX, which is 19. That should equal uh, TY, which is 6 times TZ, which is X plus 6. 7 times 19 is that's 3, 133. And that equals 6X plus 36. I need to subtract 36 from each side. And that is that's 97 equals 6x. We divide by 6 and get 16.1 or actually 2. You could leave it like a fraction, um, but I did not. If you did <laughs> leave it like a fraction, it'd be 16 and 1 sixth or 97 over 6. I hate that. I don't write that. Um, next. Next, we have a tangent segment. A segment of a tangent with one endpoint on the circle is both the exterior and the whole segment. 
scooch it on down here. If a tangent and a secant intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the circle, then the square of the measure of the tangent is equal to the product of the measures of the secant and its external secant segment. Wowza, that's a whole lot of words. Let's just go ahead and do it and make it happen. So I do like this explanation though. J at K squared, so that is the tangent, JK, is equal to the external segment times the whole secant. Okay, so JL times JM equals JK squared. Let's see what we can do with that knowledge. If PQ is tangent to the circle, PQ, that's eight. Find X and we're gonna round to the nearest tenth. So we know that PQ is the tangent. So PQ squared equals the external segment, Q not P, R times the whole secant itself, QS. So PQ squared is 64. And that equals QR is X times X plus seven. We have 64 equals X squared plus seven X. Got a whole lot of X's. Let's get them all on the same side. So I'm gonna subtract 64. Now we're gonna use the quadratic formula. Uh, all right, so we have X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. So in our equation here, we've got A is one, the number in front of X squared. B is seven, the number in front of X. And C is the constant negative 64. So let's fill in what we know for our quadratic. X equals negative B negative seven plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 49 minus four times A times C all over two A. Let's simplify just a bit. Negative seven plus or minus the square root of 49 plus uh, 256 all over two. That's gonna equal negative seven plus or minus the square root of 305 all over two. Well, 305 is definitely not a perfect square. So the square root of 305 is gonna be a decimal. So we'll do X equals two options, negative seven plus square root of 305 over two, and X equals negative seven minus square root of 305 over two. Let's get a little hint here. Uh, we can't have a negative distance, so we cannot use this second version because it'll be a negative number. We can, however, use the first one. So on your calculators, you'll have to do negative seven, plus the square root of 305 equals divided by two. And you should get 12.2. Make some sense? Very nice. Um, the next one is gonna be a whole lot similar. Try it on your own, ready, set, go. All right, let's do it. We know that our tangent is AB. So let's write this out. We're gonna have um, our tangent is AB is 10 squared, and that's gonna equal the external part, X, times the whole thing, X plus X plus four. So that's 10 times squared is 100 equals x times 2x plus 4. That's 100 equals 2x squared plus 4x. Let's get it all on the same side. Subtract 100. 2x squared plus 4x 
minus 100 is 0. But do us a favor and divide everything by 2 to start off and get x squared plus 2x minus 50 is 0. Let's plug what we know into the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Let's simplify. x is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 200 all over 2. So that's x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 4 over 2. Two possibilities. x equals negative 2 plus the square root of 2 over 4 over 2 and x equals minus 2 minus the square root of 2 over 4 over 2. It's not going to be the all negative option, so i got to put it in my calculator. Negative 2 plus the square root of 2 over 4 divided by 2. And I get x equals 6.1. Whew! Lordy B. All right. I hope this made even a whole little bit of sense. I know it was a lot all at once, and we got to remember the quadratic formula. I'll give it to you on a quiz. Not to worry. I have faith in you. You can do it. Do it.